I'm trying to think if I've ever been disappointed by a comic book movie in my life. Best comic book movie ever made. When I was a kid, it was Rocketeer. But that was long before Marvel came onto the scene and started like killing it with the movies. Um, I, you know what, I'll give it to Endgame because that is truly a comic book movie. When you can put that, mu that many characters into like one splash page spread, like when Captain America's like Avengers Assemble and they take on Thanos' army, that is literally off the page of a comic book. Greatest villain in a comic book movie. Heath Ledger's Joker is pretty amazing. Or I thought Thanos was incredible, especially considering he doesn't exist. Like Josh Brolin does in pajamas and a camera on his head, but they made that, that character feel like a living, breathing actor. Most underrated comic book movie. Um, nobody, I mean, I mentioned it before, but nobody talks about The Rocketeer anymore. And that was like spot on, incredible. And at a time when people weren't doing comic book movies well, you know what I'm saying? Now we live in an era where, you know, thanks to Marvel, everybody knows how to get one of these right, or at least get close and stuff. But Rocketeer was made at a time where there weren't a lot of examples to go from, and it's pretty beautiful. The worst comic book movie. Well, number one, there's no such thing as the worst comic book movie. All comic book movies are good. That being said, there are varying degrees of quality. And so it's not technically a comic book movie. It's more based on a cartoon, because I honestly can't think of a bad comic book movie. The Flintstones. When, remember when Spielberg produced like a live action Flintstones and stuff? This is the only movie I ever walked out of. 20 minutes into it, I was like, fuck this, and just left. I was like, what? I knew what to expect based on the cartoon, but for some reason I was like, it's gonna be a lot of rock jokes, Sharon Stone, I'm out of here, and I left. I'm trying to think if I've ever been disappointed by a comic book movie in my life, because I can always find something, you know, at the end of the day, there's always the heroic daring do of somebody putting on a mask and doing the right thing. Why I like these stories, Probably is because I was raised Catholic, and they all have. The, these are all simple morality tales at the end of the day, right? But let me think. Go hard on this. I mean, that Catwoman with Holly Berry was was kind of tough, especially because that bared no resemblance to Catwoman whatsoever. Does a comic book movie have to be faithful to the source material? No, not at all. Um, you know, like uh, Todd Phillips just a Joker, and that's not faithful at all. It's a different take on on the character that's outside of canon, so to speak. So I think you can get away with, with changing things. I mean, look, I loved Zack Snyder's Watchmen movie, even though the third act is drastically different. They got rid of the squid, and you're like, how do you get rid of the squid? But they made it work somehow. What's the great comic book movie that's never been made? I mean, uh, I love the, the book that's my Bible, uh, the one that kind of got me back into comic books in a big, bad way in 1989, was uh, Dark Knight Returns. And, you know, they've done pieces of the, it, and they've done an animated version of it. Uh, Snyder took elements for Batman v Superman, but nobody has done that epic yet. And, and there used to be a time where you'd be like, it's never gonna happen, but now you can conceive of it. They'll wait a few years, and it looks like we'll probably get the Dark Knight Returns, which is like epic. It's uh, Grant Morrison explains it as an escalating story of a man versus man himself, man versus environment, man versus God, because eventually he fights Superman. Um, it's everything that movies are made for. So sooner or later they'll make that one. And hopefully they don't make it two hours. Hopefully they make it one of those movies where like, we split it into two, because it's massive. And who would you um, cast in it? Who would you want to see as Batman and see as Henry Jacob? Who would play Batman in that, Dark Knight Returns? You need somebody much older. I mean, back in the day when we were kids, it was always Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood is the old Batman. But uh, clearly not anymore. He might be a little too old. So, although Clint could direct the movie, clearly he could direct like well into his 80s and stuff. Um, who could be the good Batman? Well, you know, it's not it's not original choice, but like I would have Affleck back, and just he did a little bit in BVS, you know, so you could kind of lean more in that direction. Yeah, I think uh, that he would be my Batman. Who would be my Joker? Russell Brand would be my Joker. Um, who would be my Superman? And he's gotta be like a living guy, Hemsworth. Cause Hemsworth is like, you ever see Hemsworth in real life? Oh, Unreal. Unreal, I would fuck that guy. I mean, if he would give me a chance. Like, oh, he's heaven. So, Superman, him playing Superman, makes absolute sense. Could you not have Val Kilmer as the old Batman? Ah, well, I mean, I would love to, but Val can't speak so much anymore, so that'd be a silent film at that point. Can comic book movies be cinema? Martin Scorsese said no. You know, what dad says goes. Um, I, I get where he's coming from. You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't ever sit next to his parents in a the movie theater and watch a comic book movie. 
You know what I'm saying? It's, for those of us who are like comic book movies, absolutely, or cinema, is because the, they have deep ties to our childhood, to the people that took us to see movies in the first place. For example, I think if you were to tell Martin Scorsese, like, well, I don't think musicals are cinema. Martin Scorsese would give you an eloquent, you know, explanation why you were wrong. And it has a lot to do with the fact that as a boy, his parents took him to see musicals. His grandparents took him to see musicals. They were part of his, his growing up, part of his experience. So he didn't grow up watching these movies. And he didn't grow up watching bombastic 80s, you know, action movies either, which are kind of the antecedent, or the precedent, rather, to, to this. So when I see a Marvel movie, I feel it's cinema because it evokes a feeling. It makes me feel like I felt when I saw Raiders of the Lost Ark or Empire Strikes Back when I was a kid, sitting next to my father in a dark movie theater and stuff. My old man's dead now, 15 years. So when I sit in a Marvel movie, it's amazing because I love the storytelling. B, it also gives me a distinct impression my old man is sitting right next to me again. That to me is cinema. Cinema evokes feeling and that's, that's cinema. I can understand why Mr. Scorsese doesn't have that type of, the same type of connected material. So that's why he says what he says, I believe. But I think if I were to be like, yeah, well, Marty, musicals aren't cinema. He'd be like, you're out of your mind and here's why. And he'd be very eloquent in explaining why I was wrong. I mean, they're really our new Western, is, is, is it. Like, basically, if you look back at Hollywood's history, like, the Western was proliferate as, as heck because it was cheap back then. And a few horses and you got a bunch of land, you got a Western. Now it's just the very expensive Western, but it's the same idea, you know, like, there's a bad guy and you need a good guy or a good girl to come in and stop this bad guy or a girl or something like that. Simple morality tales. So we've always loved that, you know, uh, uh, as in society and in, in culture. Um, we like heroes more than we like villains. We're oddly fascinated with villains, but at the end of the day, we all kind of want to do the right thing. And um, so finally, how does uh, Blood Man Chronic and Giant Silent Bob fit into the pantheon of great superhero movies? Nowhere. Uh, they, they don't even come close. We're carpetbaggers. We're people that like comic book movies and sometimes reference them in our movies and stuff. Um, I don't know, I, you know, Blunt Man and Chronic really travel a lot further than I ever imagined it would. Like, it's, it amuses me no end. And when I created that variation of them, like, ooh, Blunt Man and Chronic, it was long before I was a stoner. So it's all predicated on what I knew about weed was like from watching stoner movies and stuff. Um, that's why I liked Reboot, doing Reboot, because Reboot is the first movie, I, the first View Askew movie that I've made as a true stoner. The rest of them were guesswork. So like when I watch Jane and Silent Bob Strike Back, I'm embarrassed because I'm like, this ain't a stoner movie. Like there's nothing stoner about it. It's made by somebody who saw a stoner movie. Reboot is a stoner film, man, like through and through. So Blunt Man and Chronic sticking around as long as they have to the point where now comic book culture is the culture and stuff benefited me in a great big way and stuff. And I'm hoping my big dream for those characters is they skin them for Fortnite. That would be astounding. Jason Mewes plays Fortnite 24 seven. If he could play as himself, he would just, that would be it. That's all he's looking for in life.